Hi, Kevin. Good to see you again. Great to see you, Jim, as always. Thanks for, for having me today. So I know this is a kind of a big day for MEF, a big uh, news announcement here. So, uh, you know, why, why don't you tell us all about it? Well, you know, we're excited about this. It's been in the works for quite some time, but... Uh, you know, after 24 years, we're rebranding to Amplify, and we think that Amplify really provides a much better wrapper, both around the work that we've already undertaken over the last 10 years, but also represents our mission and our work plans going forward. So you know, at the same time, though, Jim, you know, we're so proud of the MEF history, uh, and, and the work that we've done over many years is still very, very highly relevant, both work in Kerry Ethernet. And, and LSO. And, you know, right. one of the things we chose to do is we chose to keep, you know, start our new brand with an M. It sort of gives us a, a connection back to our rich history and, uh, and you know, it facilitates that transition to, uh, you know, our new community and what we're going to be doing going forward. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the logo obviously is a, a continuation and an adaptation of what was there before. And yeah, speaking of history, Kevin, I'm just looking back through our our archives on Converge Digest, and I see the, the first article I posted about the Metro Ethernet Forum. August 2003, Metro Ethernet Forum progresses its services model. Um, it was an article about Metro Ethernet service document advancing to letter ballot, um, an Ethernet services definition specification also expected to move forward, and an Ethernet traffic management spec um, expected in 2004. And then finally, there was... Um, Eight new members, Tel Labs, Foundry Networks, Scientific Atlanta, Marconi, Ensemble, Transwitch, Xera, and Adva Optical, all of which have been acquired and moved on to something new. So, yeah, a lot of history at, at uh, Metro Ethernet Service, uh, Metro Ethernet Forum, and then MEF, and now Amplify. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing, uh, which I, I, the story I tell over and over again was, you know, MEF did a lot of a lot of things right in those early years, but we, we got the standards out in front of the industry. So, you know, back then, everybody was trying to figure out how to migrate the operators, migrate from TDM to faster, higher speed services. And the standards were baked in front of that requirement or at the time of that requirement. And so it was easy for the opter operators to sort of snap to the MEF standards, bring them out. They became the standard very quickly. We then formed a critical mass of companies to evolve them. And I think we have over 100 standards related to, you know, Ethernet. And maybe the numbers plus or minus a few, but a really great progression of that work right. to support the industry over many years. Right. And so in, in, in more recent years, the, the focus, of course, has been on um, applications and um, APIs and network as a service and sort of that, that next wave. How do you see the, the organization, um, you know, moving forward? Yeah, well, if you look at, you know, we started to pivot around 2015, 2016, where we, we started to do more work. We did work beyond layer two, or we continued to work on layer two services, but we went down layer one, layer three, um, you know, overlay services and security. So there was that building out the service portfolio and the certifications, right? And then we also pivoted towards an automation framework, respecting or responding to the operator needs to automate these types of service, particularly when they need to bring partners, they need to bring an eco ecosystem of partners. And so that, there's been a huge amount of heavy lifting in those areas, right, that's gone on for 10 years. And then as we moved closer, uh, you know, over the last few years, we saw really uh, a much greater interest in network as a service, right, where, um, you know, uh, that, that was the direction most of the major operators were going in terms of how they were positioning their, you know, on-demand type offerings, whether it was on demand, Ethernet or, you know, wherever. So, you know, we really came to the recognition that the work we've done, the rich work done in carrier Ethernet, the work done in these other service areas, the automation work with LSO, they were building blocks for NAS. So we started to pivot in that direction. Or I wouldn't say pivot, I would say evolve that, you know, with our global NAS event in 2023, right? And and so we continue on that track right now. And I would say there's a couple of really important things about you now looking at moving forward, right? Interestingly enough, coming back to the carrier Ethernet topic, it, it's pretty amazing how future proof that those, the, you know, the work that we've done is highly relevant. I mean, they had certain use cases 15 years ago, and now we're sitting here and operators are all trying to figure out, you know, what are they going to do with AI? They're trying to take advantage of AI. How do they, how do they leverage their, their assets? What do they have to do? What, you know, at the edge, what kind of AI, you know, what products do they have to offer that are AI driven to meet enterprise demands? 
And interestingly enough, carrier Ethernet plays a couple of important roles. A, it gives them that, that fabric, that very elastic fabric that can scale up to the terabytes, maybe 400 gig today is common, uh, that's elastic in nature, on demand, can be reconfigured to meet some of the AI needs. So from an elastic fabric point of view, it's still the fabric of choice going forward 20 plus years later. And MEF 3.0, which was launched in, in 2017, is still the gold standard for Ethernet because most of the work on Ethernet was done by 2017. So if I'm an operator and I've invested heavily in Ethernet, right, I've certified to MEF 3.0, I'm in many ways, you could claim that I'm kind of AI ready, you know, generally. Now, the second aspect of going forward, so that's interesting to leverage the Ethernet work, but, but also, um, and this is central to our AI strategy, you know, our, the LSO work and in particular the APIs that an operator may have invested in to, let's say, if we think of the use case of, of an enterprise buying something from a service provider, they might have been buying an SD-WAN service through a portal or increasingly through APIs, but now they could buy AI-oriented services like AI as a model, GPU as a service. So we did a very good job of really segregating function of the API from what we call the payload. So for those operators that have already invested in MEF APIs, they uh, can accelerate the operator's rollout of new AI-driven services. For those that haven't, it strengthens the business case for them to be able to justify the investments in, in the APIs. So th those are a couple of key things going forward that we're looking at. Uh, Kevin, I know you guys have also talked a lot about being a member-driven organization. You know, how do you see that changing in time and, you know, going forward? Is it more of the service providers or the enterprises or the vendors or the developers? Yeah, it's a great, uh, it's a, it's a great question, and it's been an evolution over for quite some time. We define our membership really in sort of six buckets. Uh, first and foremost, we're excited that you know, starting about a year and a half ago, we brought enterprises in. So if you look at network as a service, we brought in the, the the guys that are at the top of the food chain, you know. And we have 14 multinationals on our you know our enterprise leadership council right now. We're extending our membership to bring in enterprises at large. So we've got enterprises, we've got service providers of the different flavor flavors of those. We've got data center operators increasingly. Uh, we've got the cloud providers. Uh, we've got all the different types of vendors ranging from the big, you know, network equipment vendors or technology vendors, I should say, through to the OSS, BSS players and everything in between. And also, excitingly, more recently, we've got system integrators, global system integrators in the mix because they're there because their large customers are saying, as part of our automation strategy or projects, we are, we see MEF is playing this role and you are the guys that are going to do it for us. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting evolution. And... Uh, what we proved in the earlier years is that we could be a very effective collaboration vehicle. Earlier years was vendor community service providers. Now it's looking at that whole expanded ecosystem for network as a service. But you leverage the model you have to do, to to uh, kind of bring in a broader ecosystem, which is a work in progress. The one so, other thing I would just say is yeah. that it's a balance. You're member driven. You brought up the topic of member driven. You want to bring you know create the the uh, environment where these ideas, these good ideas can come up. And then what you try to do is make it efficient for these organizations to contribute and make them a reality. At the same time, you need a vision. If you need a vision and you need some structure and technical strategy because otherwise you can be doing a lot of kind of disparate things uh, that don't necessarily culminate in industry value, right? So we're, you know, everybody's, this, this, these other organizations like ours, you struggle with that, that combination, you know, that balance between being top-down driven versus member driven. You try to be, strike the balance in the middle. Uh, Kevin, you know, finally, what's next? Are we on for g and &E? We're absolutely on for g and &E. We're excited about round three. You know, what, what we did year three, what we did after year one is we made sure that the format was fresh, that the topics were not the same. Uh, you know, first and foremost, what we're trying to do with Genie is make sure that it represents the state of the industry for NAS, right? What are what what are the developments in terms of what's been rolled out by the service provider community, the other stakeholders, all of which I talked about? What's happening on the demand side, and this influences all the top. We really we were trying to show real developments. We want to see real things, real capabilities that are being rolled out. Now, obviously, if you go to uh, gne.amplify.net, uh, 
then you will see the topics. And what you know, it's not a surprise that you're seeing AI um, rise up there in terms of importance because it, a it's everybody wants to hear about you know what we're doing with it, um, but it's an as a service type model. It, or it certainly it, 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 there's a play there in an as a service type model for AI and how enterprises are going to consume it. So we're in, we're injecting that. Um, but yeah, you're going to see more state of the industry, recent developments, roadmaps, AI. So yeah, we're excited about Genie. All right, great. Well, we encourage everybody to check it out. We'll put the link to that um, in the description below. And Kevin, looking forward to seeing you there. Jim, awesome to talk uh, to you again. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you there, if not before. All right, you got Take it. Care. Thanks.